Hello and welcome to Bistec on Ghana Web TV. Today's exclusive package contains a roundup of trending business stories that made headlines during the week, as well as an exciting interview with a tech entrepreneur who is influencing science education in Ghana. My name is Na Oyo Kuoti. School children in Ghana are mostly taught electronics with the use of chalkboards and a smattering of books, but Dex Technology limited i beg your pardon is changing the narrative with their sign set which has everything to enable young people create their own circuits co-founder caleb fuga has the story with my colleague desmond frimpon have a look Well, I'm pretty much sure I'd have been a science genius by now if the entrepreneur I'm about talking to had in his invention right when I was in primary school or junior high school. I'm sure it would have helped me appreciate science from a practical point of view rather than the theoretical one. But the good news is this technology has come up with a science kit that's helping school children pursue their science dreams. Today we speak to one of the team members of this technology to find out the inspiration behind their innovation. So come with us. Interesting enough, I have the innovation I was talking about and I'll be speaking to Caleb who happens to be one of the team members for Dex Technology. I'm curious, how did you even get to think of an invention like this? Um, we grew up in a system where electronic circuits are drawn on the board. Whether it works or not, you don't know. I mean, you have to crunch everything into your brains and try to, I mean, rationalize the practical things in the most theoretical way possible. And we congratulate our teachers for doing that because they didn't have the tools at their disposal to, to do that for us. And so those of us who were people who taught with their hands in play we didn't get the opportunity so some of us were always at the back but deep within us we knew that if we had uh, a practical exposure we'll be able to create things so it's out of that um, need that we want to stop complaining about the fact that we are doing two poor and pass to into a real relevant value that we can give to our students and our younger generation so that they can be part of those who make decisions when it comes to the technology world we found ourselves today. So, but the math says it's not enough. Because <laughs> I can't remember when I was in primary school or even high school, the math set could probably help us do some one or two things. They helped us do math and things like that. So the science set is like, is a way ahead of its time, if I may put it. So the science set is like shrinking a whole lab into a box and putting it in the hands of every child like a math set. So inside the science set, you'll be able to do about 30 to 40 fundamental scientific experiments spanning from the use of um, solar panels, how to experiment with a vertical farm. Now that we are farming and that the land spaces are getting occupied, how do you farm into the space? that you have into the skies, I mean. So we have that concept in there. We have how to create a simple switch using normal conductors and non-conductors. So the science set is kind of a key to unleashing the creative potential in our students in the most simplistic way that technology could ever afford mankind. How did it all start? Okay. So fantastic. So, you know, we always say Ghana is blessed. Yes, yeah, so um, my colleague Charles, who is a founder, and his co-founder, um, Michael, very brilliant chap, on campus, here in USC, they usually went to do this um, um, after-school engagement with some schools in some villages. So as part of the activities, that is, I mean, to try and then make sure the students engage in more practical work, they came up with the, the idea that well, I mean, whenever they went to the school, the items that they used, they, they gathered some few items on their own. So the items that they used, the students want to keep them, the teachers want to keep them. And I said, ah, why don't we design a proper pack so that we can hand it to these students properly 
and that they can use it to engage and come up with more innovative stuff. So that is where the story began. And so Charles and Michael came up with this concept. Let's develop the science set. If we have a math set, why can't we have a science set to complement the practical activities we have in school? So they designed it. And here it is today. You, you, a lot of time people um, design things, they come up with um, innovations and things like that. And yours was, this is the situation where yours is targeted um, towards or probably targeting school kids. How has the reception been? Knowing that in this day and age, kids will want to spend time behind probably computer screens. They would want to spend time on their phones. They may want to spend time behind video games and and things like that. How has the reception been? We've had kids who would spend hours on TV, but as soon as they got the science set and they got to realize that they are really feeding their brain power, it's unconscious. But as you begin to fix one wire to the other, you build your first robot, you are given a challenge to build another thing, you forget about TV, trust me. You only go on YouTube to probably research on how to build your next project. And the reception has been marvelous. I mean, especially outside this country. Should I say it's a fortunate or unfortunate event? Where we have more schools outside the country using the science center than schools in the country. Uh, so we have 700 schools in the UK that has adapted the science set and are currently using them to train their younger ones. We have very good schools in Ghana too. I mean, modern schools, I mean, who understand where the UN SDG 4 on quality education is focusing on. And then they are using the science set to make their teachers modern teachers. They are making, they are giving their students the best of values. And we have parents who call their schools to tell them, have you adapted the science set as part of your teaching and learning skills to develop the value of our students? You'll be amazed at what the students are doing. You should take your cameras there. Take your pause right now because the demand is high uh -huh. for the conversation I'm having with you. I can tell that the demand is high. Yes. And most of the time when the demand is high in situations like that, business owners or entrepreneurs are tempted to probably sort of import parts, just bring them down to Ghana and assemble. How is your story? Is it an import driven stuff or you make everything from scratch to finish right down here in Ghana? That's a beautiful question. So the science set is a fully designed architecture and built here in Ghana in Kumasi for I mean to be precise so let me show you something so with this box the jeans was stitched together by a normal tailor who we have co-opted and then given the needed skill and the value to zip it up when you go inside the set We have these things that we have 3D printed with our machines in the office. We design the boards and then they bring them down and then we redesign them to suit whatever designs we want it to be. So everything is designed and homemade right here in Ghana. And so the, the, the idea is that uh, we are building something that the students should be able to believe in that since this is made in this country they can also one day create a product that everybody will be demanding basically that is the ideation behind uh, the the building of the components here in ghana the cost the way we have designed our thing it will cost you more to build it outside the country even when you go to china i'm telling you you could try you know, that. China is more or less like a go-to source you could try for a lot that. of businesses. You could try that. Okay. Pretty much an impressive talk there, but what is the unit price for just okay. um, one test science set. set? Sure. So we have a full package like this. This is the science set, which is going for 150 cities. We sell them at Malcolm shops. We sell them at EPP books and then um, Kingdom books as well. Nonetheless, for schools who are adapting what we call project-based learning, PBL, we have a special package for schools which can even cost as less as 35 Ghana cities. 
35 Ghana cities to enroll each and every student on the problem or project-based learning model that we've created. You've been in existence for two years, three years now? Three years. Three years yes. now. And th from the conversation that we're having, it looks like this is pretty much quite a capital-intensive one because if you're sh selling a unit for 150 Ghana cities, it means that there's so much that goes into the um, production in terms of capital. How did you guys source your capital? How do you source your capital? Okay, so... Um First and foremost, we we are telling a story of young Ghanaian entrepreneurs who are making a difference in this country. And so we pitched at every event that's possible. And we pick every prize that is possible to go back into doing our R&D and then our production. Now we want the most innovative protocol to for education on the African continent by African Union, One Africa sponsored that. We got about $100,000 from that. Mm -hmm. That's we, a lot of money. <laughs> yes, that's a lot of money, but not enough for what, what we are looking at. But it was considerably good for us to be able to expand our production scale. That is why we are here today. We also got some good money from MTN Heroes of Change where we picked the award for being the most impactful project for the year, which was looking at education. You get it? Yeah, I that too. Yes. So we, we engage in these things and we've had tremendous support from the Royal Academy of Engineering in the UK. Okay. Yes, that has really been a good uh, confirmation of a solution that works in Africa that has been adapted elsewhere. Trust me, I am really enjoying this interview and we're going to go for a short break. And afterwards, Caleb is going to tell us all the amazing things that kids who have access to the science sets are using it for. Don't go anywhere. Powers and principalities. There's so much fire inside me. Tragedy struck when part of the largest hillside at the kosher rubbish dump collapsed. It's going to be fun to see how he goes about approaching this game. Welcome back from the short break. Interesting enough, this technology has its um, innovation being incorporated into the new curriculum for studies in Ghana. I'm going to pick a thought on how exciting the company feels about this journey for them. Yeah, I think um, this is, should I say, should I say a key to to unleashing a lot of potentials in the in the in the new curriculum and what it stands for? Now you've heard about STEM, right? Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The science set would help deliver that component in the new curriculum, especially because you tell students to go and then build, um, let's say, a fan by converting energy from one state to the other. Where are the materials they are going to use to yeah. do that? Yes, yeah. Unless you just tell them to draw it and assume that the fan is working. So I think that's one of the reasons why I probably didn't like science because I'm, a, I'm old school and I was used to the old curriculum. I always had to imagine. So then moving along, there's pretty much no interest because you're not experimenting what you're saying. Definitely. And this is an amazing thing. Definitely. That, that so you, you'll be, yes, so you'll be curriculum. implementing the new curriculum halfway if you don't have a science set. That is the basic truth. So if you don't have a science set, you'll be telling your students what a resistor is rather than letting them explain to you how they feel resistors are after doing some few experiments. Students will be telling you or you, be, you continue to teach your students. You are supposed to be a facilitator in the classroom. So you facilitate how? By showing them a path. And then they go and do experiments. They observe. And then 
they come to give you feedback on the observation and then they draw conclusions together with you in that way you create a deeper sense of learning that is project-based learning so students have a direct connection with the academic work so because the way the reason you didn't like science you didn't like science was because you felt so distant from it Absolutely. it was so abstract to you Absolutely. but this time around we are bringing it to life okay. Your business ha happens to be a social enterprise. Yes. So then it's exciting for you to know how people are using it and their successes being achieved. Are you able to share with us some of the Im impressive stuff that kids in school have been able to use your stuff to do? Man. Ghanaian kids. I, I, I believe Ghanaian kids can do them just like they will, sometimes we see um, Chinese kids do Man. amazing stuff. I'm sure they do same too. Man, don't compare us to Chinese kids. <laughs> Our children are in a different level. Do you know that some of the students have already attempted to build drones? The idea to fly. When they fly, I'll call you to come and take a look at it. They've built drones out of plastic waste. And this was out of a project uh, commissioned by a Thailand company. Uh, from uh, they, they are called Indorama. So out of that project, I, I think you saw a viral picture of a student who had created a sound system using Bluetooth technology. It had a lot of views on YouTube and okay. other social media. Yeah, it is still, it is still trending. trending. Yeah. And it was sponsored by a company outside the country for us to go and do that project. There are a lot of students in that area. So we have students who think with their hands. They, do, they are not good at memorizing. They, are, they think with their hands. A majority, that is how human beings we are. We think with our hands. But educational system forces us to chew, pour, and pass. And that is where we have created this gap of value, which is needed for the 21st century uh, kind of person. So we have students who are creating drones. We have students who are creating remote control cars. We have students who are creating smart traffic lights. We have students who are creating, name it, name it. So the smart traffic light is like, so when you go, the traffic light will censor you and tell you that, okay, there's no car coming from the other side. So you move. So it's no longer a time thing. So it's like an automatic sensor. It senses that there's, there are more cars on this street than that, the other one. So this street should go. So you get it. And this was done by a GHS student who has been given the skill to. Students are building automatic irrigation systems. And the good news is this is not the first time students are doing that. But this time around, we have designed a program around it, which has direct academic relevance, and students are going to score academic points from it. Through STEM, and we have local products that has, I mean, captured a thing in one frame, called the Dex Science Set, to deliver that. This technology is right here in Ghana making science sets. Um, this is rather right an interesting note. How did you react to government of Ghana procuring mathematical sets for students during I think was it for the WASI or BEC one of those how, how was your reaction to it when you guys are right here producing science sets I'm sure there are other companies in Ghana that could have done that as well <laughs> uh, okay uh, so it's quite an, an interesting question that you've asked um, I think government should look within um, when they are doing such things at such, such scales because if you don't look within and then help the young entrepreneurs who have the ideas to come up with solutions, we'll never go anywhere. Because I believe that if they had thrown the challenge to a young tech company in this country to develop that mathematical set, which comes with a calculator or something, we could have given it a shot. But you know, sometimes when we talk about capacity, I'm tempted to ask, what's your production capacity? Probably in a month, a week, What's your production capacity? We have a lot of students in Ghana, so provided you had a contract like that, how are you going to go around it? What's your production capacity? We, we have a fantastic system of manufacturing. That's why I told you that even if you go and manufacture this from China, it might cost you more. Uh, and that is our trade secret. So uh, we, would, we have that capacity to be able to produce in mass um, numbers. We've never delayed on any deliveries across the country. We've produced for DR Congo. We've produced for the Royal Academy of Engineering. We've produced for um, some countries in Germany, I mean, some, some places in Germany. Uh, we, I mean, across the globe, you get it. And, in, in, and, and even locally, we are doing about um, 5,000 to 7,000 sets 
a month but we have special orders where we can even do 4,000 in weeks so that is an interview um, Ghana web interview business desk interview with this technology the faces behind the science it's doing amazing stuff you know our lives revolve around technology and there's a need for us to also pay attention to it kids are home doing great stuff with the the, the, the science it and what have you my name is Desmond Frimpon and it's a bye for now That was an interesting interview from my colleague Desmond Frimpon with the Director of Strategic Planning at Dex Technology Limited, Caleb Fuga. But let's catch up with our friend Jefferson Senayaza, who is on standby to share with us some useful internet tools. <music> Hello there, it's Jefferson Seniaja from Aftown Music. This week on Tech Pits, I want us to talk about stock images. Stock images are images or artworks that we use for our very useful projects. And sometimes when you're in the middle of a project or a presentation and you need something just to put there to help explain your, your, your project better or to help explain a task better, stock images are where we normally look into. Now you can easily just go on Google, you search for guy in an office space and you normally find the same type of stock images so sometimes it take you longer than uh, the entire project or your entire presentation in order to find the right image uh, to go with your presentation i want us to talk about stock images in terms of where to find the right images and how to actually uh, use them uh, we're going to talk about pixabay pixabay is uh, a website for having free to use stock images and this week we're going to dive into it and see how far it goes let's get to it so using pixabay is quite very very easy you just go to google and you just type in pixabay and there from right there there or you can just go straight into your browser and pixabay that's p-i-x-a-b-a-y dot com Voila, stunning free images and royalty free. The good thing about Pixabay is that everything you're using is legal and royalty free, meaning that the good people that have taken their time to prepare each and every images uh, is coming from the, 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 the right um, uh, people and they are giving it out for free use. Uh, and in most cases, you can use them for your projects and that. So it depends on what you're looking for. If let's just say African uh, city depends on what you're looking for with pixabay and you you get the right image and the right type of uh, uh, content sometimes they are in the form of an art and sometimes they're in the form of of, of a photo uh, it, it depends really on what you uh, you want but pixabay has the the ability to 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 find the right uh, image and it depends on also the size once you you found something you like you can actually choose which size you want and one thing i love about pixabay is that even the bigger sizes, it's not all that big. I mean, something which is 4,000, uh, over four, almost over 4,000 pixels is only 2.4 megabytes. But in most cases, you wouldn't even need that. Uh, even uh, 1920 pixels is, is a great uh, uh, thing. So uh, you can even search using your photos, using vectors, or even you can search for videos. So Pixabay is that great place to actually uh, 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 get your stuff uh, get your 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 royalty free content so i'll advise everyone to have a good look at it and next time you have that beautiful project just jump on pixabay and get the right image for for yourself so that's it for this week see you again next time bye for now there from Jefferson Seniaza. Now we move on to our business headlines. An economist at Data Bank, Karaj Mati, has projected that Ghana's local currency, the CD, is expected to remain stable against major trading currencies throughout 2021. 
Mate said he believed the stability of the local currency is as a result of measures set in place by the Bank of Ghana to prevent a CD depreciation. According to him, first of all, it is based on the performance we saw last year, and typically, this financial asset tends to move along with the sentiment of the market. Given the performance that we saw last year, which was very impressive, the expectation and the credibility of the monetary policy framework to continue to anchor policy stability was already gained. When we started this year, the Bank of Ghana also published the Forex Forward Insurance Calendar. They indicated that for the first quarter of this year, the FX Forward auctions will be allotting $50 million per week auction, and after the first quarter, they will revert to $25 million US dollar allotment per week by auction. The Data Bank Economist added, now, one thing is to note, I beg your pardon, now, one thing to note is that this allotment is higher than what will be happening after quarter one, and it's a recognition of the Bank of Ghana's commitment to currency stability in a typically difficult period for the Ghana city. Away from the CD stability, we move on to the vetting of the lands minister, where Samo Abu Jinapo, the minister designate for lands and natural resources, has given a firm assurance to deal with the issues of illegal mining in the country without fear or favor. He explained that if given the nod by the House, he would apply the law strictly without fear or favor in order to succeed. The President of the Republic, Nana Adodan Kwakufuadu, is absolutely committed to making an impact in this illegal small-scale mining industry. He, 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 his policies were rolled out in the first term, and indeed, there were some achievements, there were some challenges. If I get the opportunity, my instructions from the president are very clear, that I should go there and keep my, my head focused and work hard to ensure that we reduce the incidences of small, illegal small-scale mining in our country. Mr. Chairman, look, anywhere you have extractive industry, we, here we call it Galamsey. In South Africa, they call it Zama Zama, and it's a big issue in South Africa. You talk to the Minister for Mines in South Africa, you will admit that illegal small-scale mining is such a big issue for them. So, yes, I agree with the uh, Honorable Member's uh, assessment of the fact that you will have uh, people in your own party and in, uh, chiefs and so on and so forth trying to frustrate the situation. But I want to give a firm assurance that I'm very clear in my mind that if I get the approval from this house, I am moving in there, and I'm not just talking, I'm moving in there to, in all humility and modesty, apply the law without fear or favor. development on the African continental free trade area, the GRA, that is the Ghana Revenue Authority, has said that it has completed 81% of the rules of origin in line with the free trade area. According to a chief revenue officer at the Ghana Revenue Authority Customs Division, Fetchin Akoto, although the processes involved in it are time-consuming, some going into years of work, they have been able to attain an 81% of it so far. The rules of origin really takes a long time to negotiate. The RECs that have been implementing rules of origin, some have taken three years, eight years, and haven't completed. But we have completed our negotiation to this state in about three years. And I can tell you that the agreed rules are 81% complete. 81% complete. Uh, from analysis. And when you analyze what we have, uh, ECOWAS has offered for trading in the 90% that Mr. Biffy uh, submitted, ECOWAS has close to 73% rules agreed on, which we can use to trade with. Now, whether or not to legalize Okada business in Ghana is still up for contention. But the transport minister designate, Kweku Ofori Isiyama, has firmed up that government would not legalize the use of motorcycles for commercial purposes. This is because existing 
This is because existing traffic regulations and enforcement do not support the commercialization of motorcycles properly, popularly known as Okada. We will not be able to legalize Okada today because the numbers are not pointing to the direction that we should legalize Okada. Knowing that the issue of enforcement, you see, Mr. Pre Mr. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to be an ostrich. If there is a problem, you should all point to it. We are having the issue of enforcement in this country. And based on what is pertaining on the ground today, it will be difficult for me to lead to the legalization of Okada. If by tomorrow, thankfully the police are trying to modernize their system of traffic control. If by tomorrow, a year, the conditions in terms of traffic management, in terms of enforcing regulation, becomes conducive, why not? We will assess it. But sitting here today, and knowing that enforcement is an issue in this country. And Mr. Chairman, let me tell you one thing. In 2010, the people who died out of motorcycle or tricycle was 210. The 2020 figures, out of 2,500 people who died from road accidents, 1,050 is that the result of motorcycle. Now, the final trending story for the week. The Bank of Ghana has launched a regulatory and innovation sandbox pilot in collaboration with MTech Service LLC. The move, according to a statement issued by the central bank, is in line with its commitment to evolve an enabling and inclusive regulatory environment that promotes fintechs and supports innovation. That's it for best headlines for the week. And it's a wrap for this week's edition of Bistec on Ghana Web TV. But log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more stories. Also, get interactive with us on our social media handles at the Ghana Web on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Ghana Web TV, for more of our video programs. Thanks for staying with us. My name is Na Oyokoti. Have a great weekend. <music>